Influencer marketing that drives real action. Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. First things first, I'll introduce myself. So today I'm going to take a little bit longer than usual to introduce myself because I feel like my personal journey in influencer marketing reflects the journey that influencer marketing itself is embarking on. My name is Hannah Solle. I was born and raised in South East London and ever since a young age I've had a passion for the beauty industry and strive to gain experience. I've been lucky enough to work at companies such as Bauer Media, Hearst Publications, where I worked at Elle magazine, and Aramis and Designer Fragrances in the PR industry. This very practical focus was something that continued uh, throughout my career, and during my studies at Warwick University, I opted for a year abroad in Germany. I applied for an internship at Glossy, Box, at Glossy Box Berlin and I was successful. And this was my first experience with influencer marketing back in 2016. I worked alongside the influencer marketing manager and social media marketing manager. And the work we did was heavily influencer marketing based. We sent out monthly packages um, to influencers of our beauty box and organized influencer events. And the way this worked back then um, in Glossy Box was we had to pitch our ideas monthly for the next month um, for our influencer marketing activities. And I remember something that has sticked with me since then very distinctly is that our the C-level always asked what we thought would come out of these campaigns. Now, we were doing clippings, so we could say how how much earned media we had online and we were collecting the content so we could do an evaluation of the quality of the content. However, what we could not do, we could not say that our influencer marketing activities had a positive influence on the business in terms of how many new subscriptions we won for Glossybox. This is something that did um, begin to begin to really play on my mind and I was um, looking for something where I could deliver tangible results and I wanted to have an influencer marketing business model which displayed a proof of concept. I really enjoyed my time at Glossy Box and I was able to make the comparison between influencer marketing and the work that I did both in the PR departments and within journalism. And I claim that influencers really are a sort of modern age journalists, uh, are sort of modern age journalists. However, my strong belief in influencer marketing was not something that I felt like I could define just just within this um, area of PR and social media work, I really did want to go for something more performance-based and bring the industry, um, develop the industry, bring the industry forward. And this is how I found my current company, Hi Share That. So why am I here today? I'm here today to talk about the general topic of performance-based influencer marketing. And whilst I was speaking to Christian about what I was going to talk about today in my presentation, he said to me that he thinks performance marketing is a key trend for 2021 and he thinks it will answer a critical question for brands. How do you ensure that influencers have real impact? Well, I thought about this question in my preparation for today and I think to just consider brands uh, within the topic of performance-based influencer marketing or influencer marketing in general is fundamentally incorrect. So I've changed the question to how do you ensure influencer marketing has real impact? Today I'll be exploring different areas within this topic, this topic question, and that will be how I find that um, this question is not only critical for brands, but it's also critical for influencers. They must also question their approach in order for the industry to develop and in order for both parties to be able to find success. 
I will then proceed to look at some performance marketing based influencer models and payment uh, methods. And then I will look at what I call post-campaign communication, this certain transparency and how I feel that this goes hand in hand with sustainability. The purpose of my presentation is to analyze the mindset of those implementing influencer marketing and to draw some comparisons uh, with how influencer marketing is done now or the common way for influencer marketing to be done now with an alternative, that alternative being performance-based influencer marketing. I will look at, like I said, the comparisons and differences between the two approaches, and I'll put this into context for the industry. My contribution here today to the influencer marketing conf conference should pro provide you with the ability to recognize that current practices of influencer marketing can be or could become a limiting factor to the development of the industry. And the way to ensure this, sorry, my slides just jumped. The way to ensure this is that um, we really focus on performance because this is how we can ensure real impact. And here I just want to have... Um, I just want to say a little side note, a disclaimer if you like, I'm not discrediting any sort of influencer marketing campaigns which are not focusing on performance-based models. I'm just saying that, and as a pure answer to the question, I'm saying that the way to ensure real impact, in my opinion, is to go for performance-based influencer marketing. So to reiterate the question, how to ensure influencer marketing has real impact. So my first point here is that if you want to ensure that influencer marketing has real impact, then you need to think about brands and influencers, advertiser and influencer. And you need to think about this every step of the way. Influencer marketing is a practice based on a contract between the advertiser and the influencer. It could sound simple what I'm saying right now, but I personally think this is the biggest challenge within the industry. If you just do a quick Google search on influencer marketing and look at news articles which are written around the subject, then you will notice that the influencer marketing, um, that the discourse around influencer marketing is heavily based on that, on the experiences of brands and agencies. So my question is, how can you consider one side of the partnership without considering the other? Even having a quick scroll through these articles, you see that often the influencer is not considered. If it's a case study, if it's a learning, we're looking at it from a very one-sided perspective. And I have an example. If we have, if you're an employee and you're employed by an employer, the ideal situation is that you discuss each aspect of your job with your employer because you have a contract together and you are only going to be satisfied in your job and in your and your employer is only going to be satisfied with you if you have a partnership a strong partnership where you have a good communication and the picture on my slide here is an example of co-creation and i feel like this is a great um a great example of how the contract the influencer marketing contract between advertiser and influencer can work well. This was um, a co-creation project for a stationery company, a diary actually is pictured here. And the co-creation was between the German company, Joe and Judy and Kamushka and German influencer with 1 million followers. There is a reason that co-creation works so well. 
I believe that the fails in influencer marketing have really led to a common misconception that for the development of the industry, brands or advertisers need to achieve higher profitability. profitability. Our, sorry, but um, in order for influencer marketing to work well, influencer marketing campaigns need to be fair, profitable and sustainable for both brands and influencers because only when it's fair, profitable and sustainable for both sides will we will the industry be led to professionalism and standardization, something that both the influencer and advertiser are looking for. Influencer marketing has real impact if the campaign is built so that it's risk minimized, so that the payment model is attractive and success can be defined for both advertiser and influencer. So how can risk be advertised, uh, risk be minimized for both advertiser and influencer, the payment model attractive and success definable for both sides of the party? Performance marketing, or better said, performance-based trackable influencer marketing campaigns. Here I present four influencer marketing models, CPC, CPA, CPI, CPM. And if you're not familiar with these, I've written a short description underneath so that you can quickly read them and know your stuff. Well, at least know what I'm talking about here. By using influencer marketing models based on performance, advertisers can select payment models which align to their KPIs. And this accentuates the goal of the campaign, leaving little room to lead astray and get distracted by other positives, such as likes, without really analyzing whether the campaign was successful for the KPI. All performance marketing campaigns are trackable. They run via tracking links through which we can build specific parameters or postbacks to see what happens over the course of the campaign. And because of this, impact can be defined. Now, perhaps you're asking yourself at this point, how does this second point correlate towards the first point? How do these payment models consider both advertiser and influencer? Are they more attractive for the advertiser? Well, no, just like in the discipline of performance marketing, it depends on the placement and the price per unit which will be offered to the influencer or which will be negotiated with the influencer depends on the exclusivity of the placement. So just like if you advertise on a premium site in performance marketing, you pay a premium price. And this could be the same with influencers we could, when we can compare macro influencer running a performance marketing campaign and a micro influencer. And the second reason why these models are attractive for influencers is, is that they are not restricted by a fixum that they define for themselves or they perhaps even define due to other prices which they've heard from other influencers that are close to on the market. They are not limited by this one fixed price for a story or for a post that they have defined, but they can move above this. They can earn beyond this Performance marketing models allow them to have a true reflection of how good a brand for it this campaign was to their was to their profile and how good they've implemented the briefing. The possibility to calculate impact doesn't just stop at the main key performance indicator through through um, performance-based influencer marketing models, you are able to set and define secondary goals, secondary key performance um, indicators within the funnel. 
So what can the results look like or what does the impact look like when a performance-based influencer marketing campaign is executed? I have a case study to present. Happy influencer, happy advertiser, happy advertiser, happy influencer. This philosophy, which I've written here on this slide before I present the case study, works vice versa. Why does it work vice versa? Because the results are transparent. So this campaign was a campaign for my biggest client uh, last year, stopped at the beginning of this year. And it was a performance-based influencer marketing campaign for a loyalty card app. The goal of the campaign was to generate new users for the app, and, and that was the main goal. But the key performance indicators, which were very, um, very important for this advertiser, were the price per card opened per user, and how many loyalty cards were added in a ratio to the install. So we ran this campaign with 80 influence, this campaign with 80 influencers over a time span of four months. And the influencers were in within the categories lifestyle, shopping, good to know. We had a lot of young mums taking part. And the pricing model actually was defined in correlation to the KPIs. So this was a cost per action campaign, as you can see here on my slide. And I present the results too. And at this point, I'm quite proud to say that I can present the real results of the campaign at every point according to the KPIs. I've been at a lot of conferences actually where some people have presented their best cases and I haven't really been able to see the correlation between their best case that they, for example, managed to reach 3 million people um, via the influencer marketing campaign and the target of the advertiser. Here, it was very transparent. It was very clear. And we managed to reach 20,700 new users. That was the amount of people that installed the app. Uh, we had a 12 euro cost per active user. And in general, the conversion rate was 31% for the people that converted per new, new user per card opened. So how do you ensure influencer marketing has real impact? Point number three, you remain transparent. Transparency and sustainability go hand in hand. And when I'm looking at the question, I think, well, what does real really mean? Real for me means that something has a long lasting effect. And the effect of an influencer marketing campaign, i.e. the determination of whether the collaboration was and will remain a success, is really heavily dependent on transparency between both sides of the campaign, this post-campaign communication, which I mentioned earlier. Advertisers must speak a common language with the influencers in, or in order to be able to reach the same knowledge base of how what happened in the campaign, how it went, and to pave a way for the future, for the collaboration, will it continue? Hi, share that technology is supporting the future of the industry in that it's able to it's enabling both influencers and advertisers to use data via performance-based influencer marketing campaigns to reach meaningful conclusions. Listed on the slide are the impact the insights which both influencers and advertisers can see, can act upon in order to optimize this collaboration, but also future collaborations. So they see clicks, conversions, conversion rates, KPIs, secondary KPIs. The influencer has an indication of how they performed within this category. If they've run multiple campaigns, they can compare. And they can also compare how they 
ran in comparison to other influencers. There is a strong link between, compar- between transparency and whether influencer marketing has real impact. We can evaluate whether the campaign that just happened had real impact and whether we think that future campaigns will have a further impact. So my takeaways for today. Question your principles and practice. Are you thinking about both sides of the party? Experiment the status quo. Think about different payment models and whether the payment model you're currently using for your influencer marketing activities is relevant for the goals that you want to achieve within performance, uh, within influencer marketing, sorry. And don't leave influencers in the dark. Learn to communicate more and use this communication as a basis for optimization. It all starts with a hi. Thank you for listening. And please do get in contact with me if you have any questions based on performance-based influencer marketing campaigns.